Hello, my name is Matthew Dalitz and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of The Neuropsychotherapist and welcome to another weekly video blog from The Neuropsychotherapist. Let's kick it off today as we usually do with Richard Hill. Thanks Richard. Hi Matthew, hi everybody. Uh, here's another update uh, from the Australian bush uh, talking to you about what's going on in uh, science and neuroscience this week. Really interesting uh, paper came up in Science. It's just been uh, published. We'll have a, a link there on the page from Matthew for you. And uh, by Dr. Edward Chang and his group. And they're looking at the uh, occurrence, the neuro neurobiological functioning of language, the perception of language. So which neurons fire when sounds and different sounds are, uh, are presented. Uh, now we know we're, we're pretty good with uh, words and word fragments uh, and sounds like that bird you just heard in the background. Uh, you know, the difference between duh and da, blur and blah, things of that nature. But it's these uh, sort of elements, these features, these small features. Now in that bird call, that you heard before. It's not so much that there was a language there, there was a sound, but it still would have been this perception of types of sounds, of fragments of sounds constructing a communication. So uh, the superior temporal gyrus is the place they found, not surprising. That area, the superior temporal gyrus, the superior temporal sulcus, very important in our perceptions of social interaction. And of course, language is a vital element of our social interaction. So that's really interesting. I mean, what they did was they, they uh, got some volunteers who were having epilepsy operations, so open brain surgery, and they probed and did some testing while they were there. Really amazing sort of work. And uh, it takes you back to thinking about uh, Noam Chomsky with our, uh, our possibility of a, a, of a deep grammar, a grammar section, or Steve Pinker uh, uh, talking more about the nature of language as a flow and a process. And actually, uh, some of my writings and works where I've been talking about perhaps language is a, uh, is a, an, uh, a cooperative expression, an associative expression of personal relationship with the environment. So that's really interesting. So look at that one in science and have a look and there's a couple of commentaries and we'll put those in. One, uh, uh, Nature has a commentary and also Science, uh, science Weekly or Science Daily has a, a commentary as well. Now, the event. Um, now this is interesting. Not not strictly neuroscience, but I think this is something that neuroscientists need to be aware of, neuropsychotherapists need to be aware of and add a contribution. And this is the 2014 No to Bullying Conference. Now this is run by the Australian and New Zealand Mental Health Association and uh, I, they're free to join. So I, I joined them and I get they do lots of really good work and I, I look forward to one day making a submission, maybe doing some conference work with them. But this is the 6th to the 8th of April. This is for Australian people, by the way. The 6th to the 8th of April in the Gold Coast in Australia. That's up in Queensland. Uh, so it's No to Bullying. And the website, notobullying.org.au. We'll put a link up there on the site. And so this is talking about this really difficult aspect of bullying. And I hope that when they talk about the conference, it's not just about um, bullying per se and uh, the, the political side of it, although there are some people talking about that. But they've got some wonderful people talking who experience it, how to manage it, how to help people cope with it, how to deal with this very difficult aspect of bullying. So that's one. Science Direct, looking at language. Uh, Chang and his group and No to Bullying uh, conference. Uh, what a fantastic couple of things this week. I hope you've got some more for them, Matthew, and uh, bye for now. Uh, thanks, Richard. Our chief editor of the International Journal of Neuropsychotherapy, Dr. Peter Rosso, uh, is on the lookout for new articles for our fledgling journal. So here's a quick word from Dr. Peter Rosso. Good day. My name is Peter Rosso. I'm the chief editor of the International Journal of Neuropsychotherapy. Uh, this journal has been running for the last couple of years uh, and we would like to invite you to consider contributing to our journal. The focus in this journal is on applied brain brace therapies, strategies, research that focus on the applications of neural research in terms of clinical practice. You're most welcome to contribute and also welcome to have a look at our website www.neuropsychotherapist.com and uh, in this website you'll also find our journal with uh, a free access. Thank you Dr. Peter Rosso. Well as we usually do we're keen to find out what's been happening on Shrinkwrap Radio. 
So it's across to Dr. Dave to let us know what's happening there. Thanks, Dr. Dave. Hello again, Matthew. It's great to be back here once again to tell you about the latest podcast and to share it with all your readers and listeners. And I'm pleased to announce that my podcast is with Dr. John Arden. And he should be no stranger to you or to your audience because I believe he's published on your site. And he's got a new book. I think this could be his 14th book on the broad area of consciousness and particularly neuroscience and neuropsychotherapy. And I'm very privileged actually to live close enough to this international figure in new neuropsychotherapy for us to occasionally have lunch together. We get together about once a month and we have a lunch and a delightful conversation ensues. Well, his latest book is called The Brain Bible, A Plan to Stay Vital, Productive, and Happy for a Lifetime. And it looks pretty much like this, okay? And in it, he covers five factors that lead to brain health and brain longevity. And they'll be familiar to you. They're the education factor, the diet factor, the exercise factor, the social factor, and the sleep factor. So these come as no big surprises to, to you or to your audience. But he really drills down into each of those. And uh, even though the book is intended for a general audience, it's also intended for a sophisticated a technical audience. So there's a lot of uh, technical detail about the brain, but in very palatable form, and lots of very creative tips about ways to deepen one's practice, if you will, in each of those five areas. So I highly, as usual, I highly recommend both the podcast and the interview and Dr. John Arden's new book. So back to you, Matthew. Thanks, Dr. Dave. One of the featured authors that we've had on The Neuropsychotherapist uh, in our magazine um, has been Dr. Mona Fishbane, who's been um, very busy in the whole area of um, the neurobiological underpinnings of psychotherapy, and in particular family therapy. And she's going to be a keynote speaker at the March 6th to 8th IAMFT conference in Illinois this year. Now I'll leave all the details below um, this video, um, but here's a short clip and this is uh, taken from the Illinois Association of Marriage and Family Therapy and uh, just a little bit of insight into Mona's um, background and how she became involved in um, the neurobiology of family therapy. Uh, over the years I've been practicing couple therapy uh, for now decades and um, then in 2004, uh, I fell in love with neuroscience. This was my latest passion. So long-term love is couple therapy, newest passion is neuroscience. Yeah. And the way that happened was I went to a training with Alan Shore, mm -hmm. who is one of the people who is bringing the, the what I call news from neuroscience okay. to the rest of us therapists. Uh, and I went to a training with him for a week and was just blown away by the exciting uh, intensity and uh, richness of what he had to offer. Yeah. Um, I was a neuroscience newbie. I knew nothing and raised my hand every, uh, every chance I got. All right. Uh, but it opened a door for me to try to learn this whole new field. Mm -hmm. I then trained intensively with Daniel Siegel at UCLA, who's become my mentor. And then I began writing articles integrating neuroscience with systemic approaches to therapy, especially couple therapy. Okay. And published in professional journals and presented a lot. Yeah. And then the professional, the editor of professional books at Norton uh, asked me to write a book for them on this topic, which became the book that just was published in September. Uh, my book is Loving with the Brain in Mind, Neurobiology and Couple Therapy. That's great. Um, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It's, it's like giving birth. Yeah. <laughs> it's my first book <laughs> and how, very exciting. How long did it take you to finish? Four years. Four years. Wow. Yes. That's and, impressive. And the reason it took four years is I started out reading people like Daniel Siegel and Alan Shore and others who have integrated 
neurobiology for the clinician mm -hmm. and for regular lay people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided to write the book. I really needed to uh, learn the neuroscience itself. So mm -hmm. I started Googling. I remember I was curious about empathy, so I Googled the neurobiology of empathy. <laughs> <laughs> and that started a very large journey. Yeah. So um, it, in multiple different fields, emotion, emotion regulation, the change process, empathy, gender differences, culture, mm -hmm. um, I've researched the various fields to try to understand what these fields can teach us, um, clinicians, about change and about uh, having better relationships and helping couples have better relationships. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. I hope you um, can glean something interesting out of this week's weekly report and look forward to talking to you again next week. Goodbye.
Okay. Good day. My name is Peter Rosso. I'm the chief editor of the International Journal of Neuropsychotherapy. Uh, this journal has been running for the last couple of years uh, and we would like to invite you to consider contributing to our journal. The focus in this journal is on applied brain-based therapies, strategies, research that focus on the applications of neural research in terms of clinical practice. You are most welcome to contribute and also welcome to have a look at our website www.neuropsychotherapist.com and uh, in this website you'll also find our journal with uh, free access.